to take a record that y'all see on the radio become number one, that's two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars to get that's, on the radio. That's two hundred. Um, that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, oh my God, that's some <laughs> he capping. No, 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 that wasn't capping. <laughs> In order to break a record nationally, it, and, and it may have gone up by now, yeah. right. you're going to spend $100,000 on radio. Mm -hmm. But with independent radio stations, um, there's not a lot of red tape. There's not a lot of fluff. There's exactly. not a lot of flat. Right. Um, a lot of independent radio stations are funded by the ads. Mm -hmm. um, they're funded by grants and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So they don't have have to take a lot of money from the actual artists and record labels. Exactly. Right. So independent radio stations like this, college radio stations like this, mm -hmm. are extremely important because you can come here to build a buzz for your record. Because yes. the only way to get around paying a hundred thousand dollars to get your record on the radio is to break it in the streets. Right. right. Yeah. All right. You got to break it in the streets. You mm -hmm. got to break it in the club. You won't do that. You gonna have to cash out. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. all there is to it. You got it. You gonna have to pay the piper if you don't have a buzz. What's up, what's up, my good people? This is your girl, Miss Good News, with WLJZ yeah. 107.1, and your uh -huh. boy... Press. And your boy... Symphony. Yeah. We, here. we have... DJ Chuck T. I know he want to introduce Chill. himself, Chill. but I got I got to let y'all know I did a little homework. Okay, okay. Listen, that, that's what you're supposed let me, to do. Let me read. Let me read a little okay. bit. Uh, okay, right, we see got see what we DJ got. Chuck see what we got. T from uh -huh. South Carolina. Okay, yeah. what part? What part of South Carolina? Charleston. 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 Okay, Chuck there you go. Yeah, yeah. Chuck yeah. Right there. Okay, yeah. Right. He was once, waiting on that Chuck. Once an aspiring rapper. I was. I was. I was. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. Okay, let me. I was nice too, though. I see. Listen, if y'all want me to bust a little something, I can bust. I mean. We got a few rounds. Don't give them too much, too fast. Okay, uh, we ain't gonna give them too much, too fast. We'll, yeah, we'll wait. Y'all wait for that. We got behind the scenes for that. Yeah, we, yeah, we you know, that. a former marketer for a radio station. Yeah, yeah, yes, right. I, yep, I was on the uh, sales uh -huh. and marketing department. Mm. Correct. An uh, influencer. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. that's always. That's just who you are. That's just who I am. You yes. are correct. And now correct. a teacher. Yeah, I am you forgot a the DJ part though. And a DJ. Oh, DJ. Yeah, is that the last is for the best? You know, the best for the last. Last. You know what I'm saying? DJ part. DJ part. Yeah. I guess I'm st I'm still a DJ somewhat. Uh -huh. mm. You know, coronavirus done shut me down, though, man. Coronavirus. You know what I'm saying? Coronavirus mm. done shut me down. North Carolina done put everybody back <laughs> under quarantine. Yeah. Gave us a curfew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The ALE done ran up in every last single one of the clubs I was DJing at. Mm -hmm. Told wow. them, you know what I'm saying? We, we gonna fine you to death. You yeah. can just shut down. Or we, or we gonna fine you to death. We gonna make you go broke with these fines. We don't need wow. a fine. So That's tell good. us how all of that comes together because you can start with the rapping because uh -huh. that's how it started right yeah that's how it started so um when i first got into the music business it was probably about 98 99 i came okay. out um with a rap album with my brother and a few of my homies from the mm -hmm. hood this was in the master p cash money yeah. era right. so you know we had the the versace shirts on <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying the blinged out album covers you know what i'm yeah. saying right. with the jewel letters uh -huh. and um you know we was doing our thing but uh I just got to the point in rap music where I got tired of lying on records. Right. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. something that people don't do nowadays. They will lie their ass off on them records. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But me, I, I, I just couldn't wake up every day. every day and look myself in the mirror yeah. knowing that I had two pounds of Reggie that I was about to hit the streets with, but then I was on record <laughs> saying I had 10 keys. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I just couldn't do that, you know? Um, wow. So from there, I just bounced around the music industry, just mm -hmm. trying to figure out what I wanted to do because I had a love for music. Right. You know, I've been around music my whole entire life. You know, right. when I was a kid, my mama was a choir director. She forced us to sing in wow. the choir. You know <laughs> what I'm too. saying? My, my, right. my mama, look, that was the one thing you just couldn't get out of. You was going to sing in that choir. <laughs> You know, and yeah. you was gonna lead the song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mama was you gonna sing and you gonna lead the yes. song. I feel that. So yes. uh, you know, it, it, it was just one of those situations where you know I just developed a love for music, had to be involved in music. So I did a little bit of artist management, did a little bit of productions, yeah. engineering. Right. Um, How did you like artist management? Um, you see, I've never done it ever again. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I've never that. done it ever again. Wow. Well, okay. E- eventually, I'll get into all that. I- I'll probably get back into it more so on the artist development side. Right. But as far as the artist management side, I don't think that was my calling. Sort of like rap music. <laughs> Didn't think it was my calling. So, you know, just because, um, you know, I was moving and shaking in the streets and I used to be uh, in the radio station promoting parties, paying for ads, things of that nature. Right. I, got, I got really, really... um. Uh, comfy and in right. any good graces with the people at the radio station and I was bringing in a lot of other people to, to get their ads done as well right. and that's when I saw one day I was in there and they had uh, a job opening for ad sales mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and this is the local radio station back home in Charleston and um, I was like you know what I've always been taught if you want to make a transition out the streets to get you a good job, something that you enjoy doing. So I looked at it as a transition from out of the streets doing what I was doing. And I got a job at the radio station, got me something on paper. You know what I'm right. saying? A nice mm-hmm. little uh, W-2 and all that other yeah. good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So good I could stuff. buy me a car and good didn't have to get write-offs. nothing in my baby yeah. mama name. Yeah. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could get it all in yeah. my name. And um, I started working at the radio station. And that's when I sort of got... Uh, got uh, to the point where I started learning the ins and outs of how radio worked. Right. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I, be- I actually became a DJ. At that point in time, I-, I wasn't even really focused on DJing. But I became a DJ sort of by chance. Mm. Um, I was bringing in so much money to the radio station mm-hmm. on the ad part of things. Right. That the jocks who were cutting the commercials couldn't keep up. Oh, that right. sounds like somebody that worked here for us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. I'm gonna just give it. I'm gonna go ahead and give her the shout out. Yeah, that's good news. So, so, so they couldn't keep up with me. I was bringing in so many ads. So, yeah. um, it got to the point where you know I started having some of my clients get upset with me. Like, yo, you told me my ad was gonna run on Wednesday <laughs> at, at 2 p.m. and I'm listening. I don't hear my ad. Right. At, it's, it's 3 p.m. I still ain't heard it. Right. So, uh, being that I knew how to, I knew how to engineer from mm-hmm. you know engineering and recording my own music right. and recording yeah. for others, working in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, man, the hell with all this I got a voice I know what to do you know I know how to use the software I'm gonna cut the commercials myself because now I'm about to lose my money right, <laughs> right? right. so boom Ain't had it. so no. boom I went into the radio station late one night start cutting ads game to the production manager mm-hmm. and, and, and once they started playing on the radio the uh the PD and the, and, and the general manager naturally they, they heard the change in the voices on the ads and they were, right. who, who voice is that right. it was like oh that's the dude um, uh, uh, the salesperson he cut his own ads <laughs> right. and they said well damn make it happen bro kind of dope yeah you know what I'm saying let me talk to him so mm-hmm. I sat down with uh, uh, the general manager station his name is Cliff Fletcher um, I don't think he's no longer with us anymore uh, really really big in radio in Charleston he's a mm-hmm. pioneer in radio in Charleston right. and that's when he said look you know, I want you to come in, move from sales, start doing production. Right. So then I, I stopped doing production uh, because a, a, a good friend of mine who was on the radio got suspended from the radio. <laughs> Nobody wanted to take his his day his day part and, and, and naturally me I'm like me 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 let's do it right I got you Sign so they said up. we just gonna move Chuck Chuck T into his slot mm-hmm. you know and they moved me in his slot for like wow. a week and a half and then she from there it was it was it was no turning back no looking right. back wow I, I killed it you know what I'm saying <laughs> I killed it they love my voice love my energy and they ended up uh moving me to like late nights you know they start you off on the graveyard shift yeah and then um I ended up noticing that the people on radio who got to actually dictate what was played was the mixers. Mm-hmm. Alright, the people was actually, but anybody else, you just gotta babysit the, the, the computer. Right. right. Don't touch the computer. <laughs> Alright, don't we we, we got paid a hundred thousand dollars to make sure this song got played 30 times today. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't touch it. Yes. Alright, that, so so uh I ended up studying the mixers on the radio station. Ended up buying me uh, some turntables, mm-hmm. buying me some records, mm. you know, experimenting at home and just right. playing with it. And then, you know, from there it just grew. Uh, one of the biggest radio stations in the city um, ended up hooking up with one of the biggest promoters in the city for his annual white party. And uh, there was a conflict between the promoter in the radio station. That's how God worked, man. Listen, last minute, yes, yes. there was no DJ. <laughs> mm-hmm. And my sister was good with the promoter. She said, hey, my little brother can DJ. <laughs> right. They was like, look, we ain't got no time for no novices tonight. We need somebody <laughs> to get in there and cut up. Yeah. And then it, it, eventually they was like, you know, 
because we ain't got no choice. Ain't nobody yeah. available. Mm. So I just slid on in that thing. Yeah. Boom. All she wrote. Yeah. All she wrote. Wow. And then from there, you know, I started doing the mixtapes. And, you know, yeah. the mixtapes grew, took off. I was uh, shipping at one point in time seven to 8,000 mixtapes a month. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah. 30 mm. different states, three different countries. And, That's you know, amazing. it's just you know, grown you were, from there, man. You you hosted one of my favorite mixtapes, uh, Salisbury's own Shots Berry. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chance Dot Santana. Chance Dot Santana. Santana. Yeah. Yes. Look, look, you know. one thing about me doing mixtapes uh -huh. is, um, you know, all gas, it's, no breaks. All gas, no breaks. It's, yeah. it's never going to leave from out of me. No matter uh -huh. how many transitions I do, right. no matter how many pivots I make in the music right. business, I'm always going to do mixtapes. Right. It'll never leave out of me. I'm, I'm almost 40 uh -huh. years old, and I'm still blessed that, you know, people come to me to get their mixtapes done. Right. Because yeah. they have so many younger DJs out here, you know? So mm -hmm. just me being my age, being in the game as long mm -hmm. as I have, just to still have younger artists, Chez Dot Santana, the list goes on and on, mm -hmm. who still say, yo, I want to tap the OG, yeah. the host mind, rather than going with the young hot right now. I, I, yeah. want, I want somebody to know what he's doing on this shit. Yeah, it's a stamp yeah. of approval, though. It is, it is. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's definitely know? a stamp of That's approval. That's called branding. A lot yeah. of these I don't know nothing about branding. I built a brand. Yeah. You know what I'm How many were you pumping out? About six or ten a month? How many? I, I literally was dropping like twelve to thirteen mixtapes a month. Oof. You know what I'm saying? I would drop like four at a time. Yeah. yeah. You putting uh, in that work. Look, my mama house was was like UPS. <laughs> We was the UPS <laughs> service center at my mama house. Right. They would they would put up with two trucks sometimes and, and wow. four hand trucks. They would send extra people to my mama yeah. house. And we'd just be lobbing them things out the door. Boom. Wow. Boom. Yeah, it, it, it was a it was a crazy operation back yeah. then, man. I'm a, crazy. I'm I'm wild right now. But so you seem like you have an eye, like a niche for moving to the next thing. Like definitely. Cause you have to know what is the next thing. And mm -hmm. I even heard you speak about radio, how like you saying you have to babysit the thing. You really yeah. Don't have an input, but for WLJZ 107.1 FM, you know what I'm saying? Okay, y'all independent, so y'all yes, move a little differently. Yes, yeah. tell tell the people how that can benefit them on another level because we are able to manipulate the things the way we want to, kind of, sort of, you know? So, so the thing with, re with major radio is, with major radio, um, there's always a chain of command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always some money being moved around behind the scenes mm -hmm. for spins. Right. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people saw an interview Coach K did from QC mm -hmm. when he was on um, a Revolt at the Revolt Music Summit. Yes, they I asked him that. about how much money does it take to break a record. If you're trying to break a record, and you want to take it all the way, I'll just give you guys some game. If you want to get your record on radio, because that's the first thing an artist, when you sign, I'm like, so, when am I going on radio? Yeah, what they got to do? To take a record that y'all see on the radio become number one, that's $200,000. $200,000 to get that's, on the radio. That's 200000 um, that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, oh my God, that's some <laughs> that he capping. No, 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 that wasn't capping. <laughs> In order to break a record nationally, it, and, and it may have gone up by now, yeah, right. you're going to spend $100,000 on radio. Mm -hmm. But with independent radio stations, um, there's not a lot of red tape. There's not a lot of fluff. There's exactly. not a lot of flat. Right. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of independent radio stations are funded by the ads. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they're funded by grants and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So they don't have to take a lot of money from the actual artists and record labels. Exactly. Right. Music on. So independent radio stations like this, college radio stations like this mm -hmm. are extremely important because you can come here to build a buzz for your record. Because yes. the only way to get around paying $100,000 to get your record <laughs> on the radio is to break it in the streets. Right. right. Yeah. All right? You got to break it in the streets. You mm -hmm. got to break it in the club. You won't do that. You're going to have to cash out. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. all there is to it. You got to, you're going to have to pay the piper if you don't have a buzz. Yeah. Exactly. You know? And in order to create a buzz, you got to get the radio DJs playing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You got to get the, 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 the playlister DJs to put on their yeah. playlist. Mm -hmm. You got to get the independent radio stations mm -hmm. playing it. You got to get social media yeah. on top of your record, whether it be um right. uh, challenges yeah. or, or TikTok things of that nature. You got to get the influencers to post about it, repost about it. You got to right. get the DJs, you know, buzzing about it, talking about it, and telling other DJs about it. I tell a lot of people, um, when you talk about DJs, some people say, oh, the DJs in my area, they don't really play my stuff. There's not a lot of clubs. There's not a lot right. of, you know what I'm saying, right. things open right now. Um, 
It's just the influence that other DJs have on other DJs. We pay attention to That's other right. DJs. So sometimes that makes sense. you may not be able to the pay a DJ or or network with a DJ and get him to play your stuff. But a good word that he can put out about you and put out right. about your record right. is what's going to go the longest. I know it, here at, at at our radio station, like like you said, we are owned by Livingstone College, so we are a college radio station. I literally can just play a song and then play it again if I like it. Exactly. I can play a whole album front to back if I wanted exactly. to. Exactly. Other, you know, major radio stations can't do that, they but we have, can. They don't have that freedom. And, and so what right. I try to tell these people is not only are you bringing it for the radio station, but we're owned by a college, which means college students who are going to yes. go back home and take what they like back to their friends. Like, yo, you exactly. ain't heard of so-and-so. Right. It, it, and, and literally, as we are building, you know, we're about to get a new tower and everything mm -hmm. like that. So we're going to be, uh, you know. Going Expanded. a whole lot further and, no, and expanding, that. but what I'm telling them is lock in now because it's moving so fast. I don't want to leave you behind. You know, if, if you definitely got something worth playing and we like it, we'll play it. It's as yeah. simple as if we like it, we'll play it. Exactly. That's easy. Exactly. Um, just just you know, as far as I go mm -hmm. in my career with the mixtapes, the colleges is what really took my mixtapes and spread them all out throughout the United States. You wow. gotta remember here in the Carolinas, in, in the military as well, mm -hmm. um, right. military bases. This is something that a lot of people don't know. Here in the Carolinas, you gotta tap into uh, uh, those avenues because we have the largest concentration of urban radio stations here right. in the yep. Carolinas. We have the largest concentration of HBCUs. Yes. Yep. And we have the biggest military bases Mm -hmm. And the largest concentration of military bases Facts. here in the Carolinas. Wow. So wow. that's why everybody comes here for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes to us. We, are, but the thing is, we're consumers. We're not producers. Right. Yeah. If right. you want to get your record broken, everybody will tell you we go to the Carolinas first. Mm -hmm. You know these these uh these Atlanta artists. Who, who bubbling underneath the radar mm -hmm. The first places they get a bag at Is in the Carolinas wow. The first places they get their record broken Is in the Carolinas yeah. We've seen them uh, They'll come here and they'll do a show In uh, Columbia, South Carolina Charleston, South right. Carolina Go up to Myrtle Beach Go to Fayetteville <laughs> Go to Raleigh Then they'll uh, they'll come back down 85 They'll go to Greensboro They'll come to Charlotte They'll mm -hmm. go to Greenville, South Carolina right. By that time they look right. 30 days is up And they'll be right back around Doing the same thing Columbia, South Carolina right. Charleston, Myrtle Beach uh, Fayetteville Raleigh uh, um, uh, Charlotte um, uh, uh, Sumter They'll do yeah. Sumter, Florence They'll do the small country towns yeah. and, and, and they done they, right. in, in a, like a two month period These niggas done made a heavy bag Right yeah. But we gotta tap into that We can't keep letting exactly. everybody else Come here and get the bag before us They can come here and get a bag too But they shouldn't be able right. to come here And get a bag before right. us And right. we're talking about large bags Right, listen you know? WL LJZ one hundred seven point one FM. We here with DJ Chuck T. Uh -huh. Listen, when you Google DJ Chuck T, the first thing that comes up it says the most powerful man in Carolina music. Yeah, wow. okay. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it as well. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't um, I wouldn't have uh, even put that title anywhere close to my name. Right. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's kind of arrogant. It's kind of cocky. <laughs> nah, uh, but th this interview right here is is going to be even more proof. You know what you're talking about, exactly. brother. You, you know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. And, and um, Stats. you know, in, at some way, in some way, shape, or form, I have helped the biggest artists that come from the Carolinas mm -hmm. get through doors that them and, and their record labels and their managers and their homies and their money right. couldn't Would get them into. Them. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's why reputation means everything. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because there are some doors. That can't be opened until you get that cosign or you mm -hmm. get that, right. that that verified stamp from somebody. Yeah. Right. And um, I had to get the same stamp from my OGs. Right. There have right. been things that I have really, really wanted to do that I felt like my talent and my accolades mm -hmm. um should have allowed me to do right. that I couldn't do. And right. it wasn't until I had to pick up the phone and call somebody <laughs> and they said, "Don't worry about it, Chuck. I got you." Fifteen minutes later, boom, there you I'm go. in that dope. That's how it works. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and, and this, we can say it a million times, people. Sometimes we'll listen Sometimes they won't listen yeah. But you know your, your, your network determines your network yes, That's sir. right All right. Your That's network right. determines your network And um, your, your relationships are everything Relationships, yeah, relationships are everything. everything Keep yeah. those relationships good Even if you gotta bite your tongue sometimes <laughs> yeah. man. Mm -hmm. You know even there if you, you gotta go. Now don't let nobody push you over now no, no, Check no.
Let them know what's up. But sometimes <laughs> right. you do got to sort of bite your tongue and mm -hmm. not say exactly how you feel. That's how right. do you think that the people in Carolina can get there? Get to that point where we are not just a consumer, but we are taking part in the advantages. Because obviously, like you're saying, they're coming here to get these things. Mm -hmm. How do you how would you tell people to start? To get it, like benefit from where you at, don't? Because a lot of times people in Carolina think that they have to go Outside. to Atlanta or go, you know, other places when it's right here. Like you can get some of that stuff here. You can get it all. You can yeah. get it all. And and I always tell people the two biggest hip hop artists to come out of the Carolinas did not have to move outside of the Carolinas. Right. And that was Lil Rue from South mm -hmm. Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um. And that's the baby. Right. From North Carolina. Right. Yeah. And even if you want to go further back and talk about Petey Pablo. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Those are the three biggest hip hop artists to ever come out of this state. And they you've never seen them hop on the internet and say, the Carolina. Right. These Ah, uh, my city hate me. Ah, uh, that you never heard <laughs> yeah. either three of those artists say that. Nor J Cole. No, nor J Cole. Yeah. You know, right. even though J Cole, you know, he moved. He, to he, he, he had to he moved. He, yeah. yeah, he moved Saint for John's. college purposes. Yeah, he yeah. went to St. Right. John's. He moved for college purposes, but even then, like, he still has never said like. Nah, he Cat didn't support me, so right. I had to go to New York to get on. Right. You right. know, like he still never said it. Right. So I feel like once you get out of that mindset of you gotta me because I'm from the city or because I'm from the Carolinas right. and, and develop a mentality that says I'm going to work hard as a That's and right. I want you to me because I work hard yeah. and because I, I, I follow a strict business plan and because I handle my business right. um, personally and professionally um, then we'll sort of get out of that whole uh, mentality of um being local forever i hate yeah. i hate to say it but there's just <laughs> right. so many artists that's gonna be local forever because mm -hmm. they think locally right and we gotta uh and i see it happening more now we gotta sort of get out of our shells and move around to the carolina yeah collab more right work with these djs mm -hmm. more don't wait till a dj brings a meet and greet to your town right do a meet and greet in another town yeah you know because people like me Issa, ty pack Mm -hmm. We gonna move around. Yeah, right. for sure. You, you can't wait for us to bring the event to your city. Yeah, no. Nah. You gotta leave. Mirror, I am. All of us. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. You gotta follow us around. Yeah. You know, get to know who's popping in Raleigh. Get to know who's popping in something. Get to know who's popping in Greenville. Get right. to know who's popping in Greensboro. Get to know who's popping in Charleston. Right. And, and, and when you come to these networking events, show out. Yeah. They don't show come out. and show out. They come and they stand in the corner the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Too cool you for know school. what I'm saying? <laughs> Too cool for school. Yeah. Right. They come right. stand in the corner the whole time. They don't have not a CD, not a flash drive, not a poster, not right. a flyer with them. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? They come looking like everybody else. Like they, they walked in the DTLR and limbs and, 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 and walked up to the uh to the mannequin and said, Let me get that whole outfit right there. Get the whole fit. <laughs> they don't have they don't have no merchandise with their name on it. Right. You right. gotta go to these networking events. You gotta show out. You gotta mm -hmm. own that. Yeah. People say, oh, you know, I don't like doing showcases and I feel like I'm too big for all that. How you too big for it? Don't nobody know you can't. That's right. You went to 20 showcases, paid to perform, and left right after. That's yeah. right. You're right. And now you want somebody to pay you. Nobody want to pay you because they don't know you. They right. don't know you. You know what I'm saying? You got to walk into them, them showcases and, and you and your whole team got to have on the team apparel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be the hoodies, the t shirts, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the bandanas. Then yes, you got to bring enough to give away to everybody in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to get they early. Send two, three people, get they early. Have them posted at Fly it out. Yeah. Find out who the bartenders are, who the door girl is, mm -hmm. what size you need, baby. I'm going to pay you to wear this shirt the whole night. Yeah. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Either I'm going to tip you big. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to give you the money, but I'm going to tip you. Wear the shirt. When you bring us our drinks, I'm going to tip you, and I'm going to make sure you're taking care of. Yeah. You know wow. what I'm saying? Pay the DJ for mentions the whole night. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Come come with the mm -hmm. big posters, the banners, yeah. all that. Yeah. Y'all need all these <laughs> right here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You need about 10. Walking and holding this up just like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Holding up the flag. <laughs> there we go. You need 10 of them just like yeah. this. You know? 10 of them just like this. Holding it up here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? 
No, but, but you 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 saying it and what the the passion behind your conversation is hunger. And exactly. I think a lot of people they're not hungry as they say they they're are. Hungry. They want the benefits, but they don't want to go through the process. At all. And so without the process, you can't learn the you lessons. Can't. Like it, it's impossible. So Look, I mean, you got to think I've been there, done it all. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I've been there, I've done it. I, I've experienced it. I've lived it. You yeah. know, I did it for myself. That's mm-hmm. it. You know? So we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back. Let's all do right. it. Yeah. Let's do it. This is the one and only Carolina King, DJ Chuck T, a.k.a. the most powerful man in Carolina music. And I want to give a big shout out to WLJZ Radio, 1071 FM, located right here in the Carolinas. Y'all need to be tuned in. And if you're not tuned in, then you're missing out. 